Good morning everybody, happy Sunday, welcome back, hope everybody's good. I wasn't going to make a video about this this weekend, actually I had another plan for something pretty cool. But uh, one thing led to another and uh, yeah, here we are on another crazy random journey. So where do I start with this? <clears throat> So you guys know I've got the CRT and one of the reasons why I bought the CRT is because it's the best way to play light gun games, yeah? You can't play light gun games on modern TVs, they, they, they don't work properly. And uh, you saw last week I had Lethal Enforcers which was a good laugh but everybody knows for the more modern games you want a uh, the Namco series of games, right? <clears throat> so. <laughs> This is a confession time now. I, <laughs> I committed the cardinal sin. I, uh, <clears throat> I purchased off eBay. This is a long time ago. A big, big pickup of uh, light gun games. So these are, see, like the Time Crisis range on the PS2. So I had all of these, but with it, I also purchased <clears throat> a Guncom 2. Everybody probably knows what these things are, right? Pretty much the standard of what everybody says is just the best, one of the best anyway, uh, home light gun games. So when this came, the dude did some crazy wrapping where he wrapped this with that in some bin liner and he wrapped it over and over and over again and uh, it was the right mission. So I got the scissors there, start snip, 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 snip. Lo and behold, when I opened it, I realized I fucked up. <laughs> You can see it. I snipped the cable to the uh, to the yellow bar. So I was going to chuck it. I thought, well, what am I going to do with this now? But then, uh, well, logic may have prevailed. I've, I saved it. I haven't repaired it. But uh, I'm going to have a go of just seeing if I can do something with the uh, connection and the shielding. But either way, I knew I was missing a. Uh, Gun con tube, so in the event when I got a CRT, I wouldn't be able to actually test it out, which uh, was a crying shame. So, I took that to one side. <clears throat> so, this weekend, I thought, you know what, I really want to play on some of these light gun games. I've been missing out for a while, that's what I want to do. So, I thought, I know, I will go to Vintage Gamer in Hales Owen. I, I think I've, I've seen them have like a loads of random crap in the back room so I thought if anybody's gonna have one guaranteed Nick will have one down in Vintage Gamer and, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have been there before but Vintage Gamer is a great little shop in Hales Owen it's not the biggest it's not the best laid out he has just uh, renovated and done it all up to make it look a little bit better and nicer and he's done a pretty good job uh, but yeah, Nick in general is a top bloke, and uh, yeah, I've, I went down there on Friday, and it was just crazy. <laughs> so anyway, what what we came for to begin with, my pickups, the gun con too. Obviously, I will be firing this up. Test footage of uh, yeah, which one should I play? Probably Time Crisis too. Let's just get that one on the go and. Uh, See what, see what's what. I hope I really wanted to pick up uh, Resident Evil Survivor on the PS2. It's called Veronica, but Nick didn't have it, uh, which was a shame. But I think CEX might. So I might uh, swing by CEX later and grab it if they've uh, if they've still got it. It's a pretty pricey game, to be fair, but uh, yeah, I think it'll be worth it. So yeah, you'll see me shooting up. Uh, I think are the terrorists. Who are you going after? Arms dealers, everybody hates arms dealers, right? So yeah, I think it's a two-player game. Yeah, it is a two-player game. So I, I really need to uh, get the second one up and running to buy that. <clears throat> so anyway, when I went to Vintage Gamer, and inside the cabinet you'll see Nick had a copy of Donkey Kong Land 2, which I don't have for the Game Boy. I've got the first one, everybody's got the first one, but uh, I didn't have two or three, actually. And uh, inside his glass cabinet, again, I'll, I'll sh you'll see the general tour videos. That's usually where he puts his ooh specials that he's got the the best of the creme de la creme, 
of whatever he's holding at that time. He, he, he sticks it in there. And, but he's kind of sparse. No way much in there. <clears throat> so anyway, we started talking and uh, he, ta <laughs> he said to me that uh, if I'm after Game Boy, he, he just picked up this amazing, huge pickup of Game Boy games of some dude in uh, Warsaw. <clears throat> and that he's keeping them all for this upcoming show which he thinks he's going to do really well out of because it's one of the best shows he's on about the Birmingham Games Fair hopefully you guys are going to that and uh, I told him well I like Game Boy games and he said well if, if you are interested maybe I'll show you I said yeah I'm interested I'm interested let's see what you've got I had no idea what else what was going to come up right <clears throat> but uh, so he walks into, shuffles into the back, underneath the stairs into a storeroom I didn't even know was, realized was there. And uh, well, cue the footage. So you can see guys, we've got one, two, three bags, crammed two, three layers in of all kinds of Game Boy games. These are all Game Boy classics, there's no color. I told you I wasn't really into a, the color, so we kept those ones separate. So you can imagine how many he's got in total. You can see there, there's the titles are great. So you saw it, right, guys? That was pretty insane. The three of those Aldi reusable bags filled, filled with uh, high-end, very uncommon to rare, some commons, but mostly uncommon rare Game Boy games. Nick, Nick shows me they were all complete, bar one, and there's one with a repro. All crazy manner of uh, random titles, some I'd never even heard about before. I uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you could tell, I, I put aside a pile of games that I really wanted and uh, I also put a, put across a pile of games who I know, the uh, the Sniper, <laughs> Metal Gear Sniper Wolf, Get Retro, that he would be after, so I thought maybe if we could do some sort of deal we could uh, I'd pick up some of those <clears throat> as well on his behalf and uh, yeah, so let's just go through well, well, we'll do Get Retro's first because uh, free content. So Get Retro, he's a WWF fan, a, a proper WWF fan. He loves the old school. His favorite is uh, the American Badass <coughs> Undertaker. <laughs> um, so yeah, I knew he was after some of these Game Boy games because they're relatively uncommon. So we'll go through it first in order of rarity. So he had this Superstars. See Macho Man and the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk on the back. I've already got this one, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, again, nice and complete, sharp. And then he had the sequel. That's got Taker and what's the one? Don't know who that is. Again, Macho Man. Again, great condition. Don't see this one as often. Superstars two. <clears throat> This one you rarely ever see, and that is the Game Boy version of Raw. This is rare on the SNES, and <coughs> I believe it's just uh, equally as rare on the Game Boy. And again, love the box art on these, they, they look fantastic. Gameplay wise, they're, they're probably really basic. <coughs> but I think the, the rarest out of the lot is King of the Ring with gold members favorite. Brett the Hitman Heart on the front cover. Again, gameplay wise, it's gonna be basic, isn't it? <clears throat> They're not really gonna be able to do much with uh, the Game Boy's two buttons, but uh, again, some of your favorite wrestlers from, I'm not sure what it's called, the golden age of wrestling from the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Classic characters, classic uh, personalities, over the top, colorful. Do kind of miss it in all honesty that like, wrestling's all rubbish now but yeah i picked up these four and uh <coughs> so i told nick he, nick nick knows get retro really well because get retro has <laughs> been in there quite a few times purchasing quite a few bits and pieces from him and uh, i told him that these are who they're for and uh, he said uh give him this price uh, this is how much they are and I'm not doing him a penny off. He's a tight git <laughs> So I messaged him. I said this is how much he wants for him uh, So obviously he naturally says a price which is uh, a sixth less 
uh, in classic, classic cheapskate get retro uh, mode. And uh, I, may, I asked that to Nick and he told me to tell him to get lost. <laughs> because he can never get that price because they'll still be here in a week's time when he's back from holiday. Otherwise, uh, he ain't having them. <clears throat> and he, yeah, he was like, yeah, just get them for me. <coughs> so yeah, shout out to Nick, shout out to Get Retro. So the Game Boy games that I picked up, now I put aside a few extras, but uh, <coughs> the price wasn't great for whatever you wanted for them, so I, I just picked up these in the end. So again, we'll go in order of rarity. He had the, the first version of this game, uh, but I thought, you know, the second version, probably rarer, probably less uh, known, and I, I like the art, actually. It's Spider-Man 2. Uh, I think that's Venom yeah. on the front. It should be Venom. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, no, it might not be because of the eyes. It might be the other dude, I can't remember the dude's name. But yeah, Spider-Man 2. Love Spider-Man from this sort of era. Great fun. One of my favorites. Again, LG. Back after that coughing fit. Hopefully, I'm uh, a little bit better. <clears throat> the next game for the Konami Silver Box Collection is Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan. I didn't even know this game existed. Let's see the Silver Box designation there. Don't know much about it. Side scrolling beat em up type game. Never played this one before, but uh, glad to add to the silver box collection. Next up, I don't know if uh, who's played Super Ghouls and Ghosts, probably everybody, right? Solid. And then the follow up Demon's Crest, which is super rare. The character from that, this Gargoyle dude, had a Game Boy game called Gargoyle's Quest. Looks and plays apparently very similar to Demon's Crest. So, uh, just fly around and yeah, save the day as a, as a goggle. Looks pretty cool, and uh, I knew about this one. Kind of been looking for it at a reasonable price. So, glad to, glad to pick that one up. And last but not least, everybody's favorite Capcom uh, shoot em up platformer is Mega Man. Dr. Wily's Revenge. Everybody knows who Mega Man is, right? So kind of a classic one to pick up. Hopefully you can see, you've seen guys, just like all the rest of them, these are all in very good condition. All the corners are really sharp, there's no clear damage or real problems with any of them. They will look fantastic on display and uh, again, stuff that you never see really out in the world that often, let's face it. When you, you saw the bags, right? <laughs> It's crazy, yeah. So, <clears throat> Nick said he's going to take everything to the Birmingham Games Fair in May. So, if, if you're a Game Boy collector and some of the titles that you may have seen in the video uh, looked of interest, you can either well, go down to Vintage Gamer, uh, tell him that uh, you saw the video and you have some of the Game Boy games, or just head down to the uh, Games Fair in uh, Birmingham at the Custom Factory. We'll be there. Uh, amongst other people, so uh, yeah, shout out to you. Alright, so one of the best things about Vintage Gamer is it's <laughs> the best place to see and find random stuff. There's always some excitement going on. You'll see, he's, he's set up some cabinets near the front with the various bits and pieces, and he'll always have like random stuff chucked on the floor from his various pickups and deals. It's got well, laid out relatively nicely, I think. There you can see the counter and uh, just general 360. To the left of uh, the counter is this little area there. There's Nick. You can see he's got uh, Mega Drive and things like that laid out. And then in the back room is where he's just uh, shoved all the PS1 and Xbox and PS2. And then just off there is kind of like the real nook where you could find the really obscure uh, PC games and accessories and bits and pieces. It's pretty crazy, really. 
Okay, so the remainder of the pickups aren't as exciting really, but uh, I've already got these already. Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3. I'm, in particular, I wanted this Donkey Kong Country 3 because the condition of this is better than mine. And uh, it's a classic game. I'm sure it'll be highly desirable. I'll keep it as a spare for the time being. <clears throat> and then Donkey Kong Country 2, a little bit more battered. A little bit of tape and the corners aren't as good, but still <coughs> in reasonable condition. Again, he did me a good price on both of these. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll have them. Again, the next game, which is just an upgrade on one I've already got, is this Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES. You can see that the condition of this one is very nice and sharp all around. <clears throat> In particular, I love the fact that he had this Woolworths label still on the front. Everybody's probably nostalgic for Woolworths, right? And uh, the other thing that I'll, I'll fix is it's got the Nintendo label on there, so I'll try and glue that back down. <coughs> which, is, which will be quite nice as well, I think. So this will be a nice upgrade to the one that I've got already on the shelf. I'll put the other one away. And yeah, just for that Woolworth sticker, for me, makes it. Last but not least, <clears throat> is a game that I really wanted to play, actually, when I purchased my 32X, and that is Star Wars, the arcade game. <coughs> I'm not sure if this is on anything else. I'll definitely insert some footage now. Everybody loves... Uh, Piloting the X-Wing and the trench run, attacking the, the Death Star. It's great box art, right? It's got Darth Vader in the background, TIE Fighters and an X-Wing flying out. Classic Star Wars games. Who remembers, uh, you can see that LucasArts. <coughs> they came out with some absolute bangers of Star Wars games and other games back in the 90s and noughties. It's a shame that Disney screwed it up. But yeah. I need to get a cable, an AV cable to connect my Mega Drive to the TV. At the moment I've just got the aerial variant which is no good. And then yeah, I'll be firing this up to test this alongside the other Mega Drive games I've got. <clears throat> so you can tell that's a substantial lot, right? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it weren't cheap. Um, he wasn't budging on uh, the WWF games for Get Retro. But shout out to Nick, he's always transparent guys with pricing. He kind of told me what he paid for all these. And uh, obviously he's a business, right? I'm not going to try and screw him over. You've got to haggle and barter a little bit with uh, retro gaming and stuff in, in these days, especially with the prices. But uh, we managed to negotiate a pretty good price. I would say Nick always is fair. I'll say the one thing that's good about uh, the way Nick prices his games is he's a connoisseur for condition <clears throat> so Nick really does have a good eye for detail uh, if something is mint you know what I mean he will price it as such but at the same time if uh, he sees the defects if he sees that it's damaged out of shape marked it's got labels or it's faded or whatever Nick is straight up honest about that and he will factor that in with the pricing which you won't see on eBay or anything. So whereas everybody else prices everything up against eBay price, he'll do that, but at the same time, he will genuinely factor in the condition and to a really fair level, you can't argue with uh, how he does it. So uh, <clears throat> based on the condition of various stuff, you can see the 32X Star Wars game is a little bit out of shape. And like I said, the, uh, the Donkey Kong Country 2 was good. He knew, he knew that was good but the Donkey Kong Country 2, sorry, was a little bit more battered, so he, <clears throat> he did price up really well. But all that being said, we started off with eBay prices and then he gave me a fair chunk of discount on top of that, considering the total cost of how much I put. And you can go on eBay and figure out what it's really worth, it's, it's a lot. So yeah, I wasn't expecting or hoping to pay that much, I just wanted a 20 quid G-Con. <laughs> But after all that, I said to him, Nick, you got to give me something after spending this much money, right, as a gift. And I tried to, uh, <laughs> I 
I tried to get a 25 quid uh, Rosalina Amiibo out of him. At first he was he was open to it, but then he clocked it with 25 quid, so I had no chance. So out of his little trinkets, he gave me uh, just a couple of little figures for uh, my office space upstairs. I've got an Aladdin one, and then <clears throat> I've got a general random small figures. I can't remember this guy's name, but uh, they're both pretty cool, and he took them for free, so yeah, can't argue with that really. <clears throat> so to summarize, uh, Vintage Gamer in Hales Owen, I would recommend as one of the best retro game shops that I've been to. Obviously I haven't been to all of them, but uh, in terms of stock and layout and pricing, he's always up there. He's not taking a piss. He'll do you a fair deal and uh, <clears throat> overall what sets him apart from everybody else is, well, in general he's a top guy, right? I'm not saying everybody else are, are twats. <laughs> But uh, Nick's a top guy and he, he's a genuinely passionate guy. If you ask him about his life story, about how he came about to all this, and it's an interesting tale. It's quite uh, inspiring and I, I reckon everybody should go check it out. Definitely pick up some good ones. Okay, so that's two pickup videos in, in, uh, in a week. So next week there will be something different. But then after that, there's, like I said, there will be some more pickups and the Retro Games Fair coming up in May. Can't wait for that. Should be good fun. But yeah, hopefully that was interesting and uh, you enjoyed the various pickups and I'll see you on the next one.